Today, we're gonna paint this thing black. Well, what I said earlier, obviously we're not doing that because there, there's there's a red one, which is different. That's that has a two on it. That's the amped two, amped as in amp pedal. It's not clever. Uh, there's there's a black one. It looks similar, but it's not the same thing because whereas the one is a pedal platform thing with a I think reverb and that's it. The two has loads of effects and a built-in tuner, which for unexplained reasons they thought. We don't need on the black one. Let's check it out. 
it is technically a three channel amp with a lot of features and a lot of things where you go like, why'd they do that? So it's definitely loaded with features and it is, I think, aimed at the higher gain people, but not necessarily because there's a, a good load of lower gain sounds to be had. So let's look at it. Clean channel, crunch channel, which makes sense. We understand crunch. And when we get top layers read overdrive, it is apparently something different in the Blackstar house because we think that is an overdrive. So it's put, it's to be screamy territory. What they mean is high gain. Why do they write overdrive? The word for this is distortion. Even though technically with the clipping that's happening might not be distortion, but I mean, that's what it is. So this should read high gain. This is very misleading because especially with the OD1 and OD2, I thought this engages an overdrive, like a Tube Screamer, Clon or whatever. I thought that this engages an overdrive to be put in front of the crunch channel. It isn't. This is de facto the third channel of the pedal amp. And it is a high gain channel with an setting one and setting two. And why they're calling it an overdrive, I don't understand. So three different channels on the clean channel. We got gain, bass middle treble, this frequency thing that shifts the frequencies a little bit from American to UK or American to UK. I don't know in which direction. We're going to fiddle with it and listen. And then the clean channel also has a warm and a bright setting and it can be boosted with this boost section right here the boost section can be pre preamp or post preamp there's a reverb which you can turn on individually with a dark and a light setting different reverb settings can be achieved in the app which we'll look at later with usb usb c hook it up to your computer and have full up control over everything <clears throat> The crunch or crunch has a crunch setting and then the super crunch is kind of like a modded version of it. So let's say, you know, Plexi, modded Plexi or JCM, modded JCM, something like this. It's a, that kind of thing. And then you've got overdrive one and this is more of a modern OD2, a modern, more modern high gain sound, all of which actually can be sent through an 6L6 power amp. EL34 power amp or EL84 power amp. But is it? No. It is very important to understand that this whole thing is a modeler. It's a hands-on modeler. There's no menus, except in, no, in the app there really aren't that many uh, menus, but it is a modeler. It is all running DSP. Your guitar completely gets digitized. This is not tube. It is not solid state. It is none of those states. It is a modeler. You have to understand that. And then you can send it out 1 watt for bedroom play, 20 watt for what we're doing here so I don't kill myself. It's still pretty damn loud. And 100 watt if you want to kill people live. It is a full amp and we're going to run it on a cab. So right now we are in the manual mode, which is what you see is what you get. Everything is as it is set. When I'm holding in boost, now... The dog's running, sorry. Uh, we're actually in the uh, patch mode where you can't really have presets per se, but clean now has a setting that you can set up beforehand and it will be the settings that you set up for the clean and then saved. Same one on the crunch, same on the overdrive. Now, you can very easily see that you're in patch mode by overdrive being red, crunch being let's call it orange i mean to you that probably looks the same the difference is tiny which is fine you can see red and orange and you'd see i am in patch mode versus i'm in manual mode you see that however my gripe when i'm on clean am i in patch mode am i in manual mode now, for life, it would be kind of important to know where you're at. Getting some visual feedback to know that you're either in patch mode or manual mode. So right now, where am I? Do you remember? Ah, we're in patch mode. So, um, Blackstar people, you might think about a light 
maybe this thing blinking or something that shows you live and gives you visual feedback over where you are at. Because if, if I'm on clean, I have no idea because it's white or white. Exy, what are you doing? There's dogs peeing outside, but you don't need to know that. So, when you're in, hello, can I help you? When you're in patch mode, it doesn't remember the state of the reverb, which is kind of sad. So you would still have to turn reverb on and off. Let me, let me show you. So I'm going to fiddle around here, going to go to super crunch, do everything that I want and save it, right? So we're saving this. Okay. And you turn the reverb on or off. Let's turn it on and save it. Okay, so it's going to go around. But you see the reverb never turns off. So if I now go to my crunch where the reverb was on when I saved it, this stays off. So the reverb state doesn't get saved. Blackstar people, you've got a kick-ass product here. I mean, let's, let, let's be honest. you got a kick-ass product. Right, right, right out of the gate, I'm going to tell you it sounds great. W why? Why are you missing the little things? Why are you missing the little things when it comes to usability? I don't understand. You have a way of saving the state of the damn channel and you're forgetting the state of the reverb. So I'm on clean and now we're gonna, with the reverb on, now I wanna, you know, metal and I'm gonna have to turn the reverb off. What is this? It's an oversight, that's what it is. Okay, so. Let's go to the back of the whole thing. I'm going to show you more features. I know this is a long ass video, but hey, that's what I do. So here we got input and output. Not quite sure. Maybe it's just, you know, going through. Not quite sure what the output is. There's a uh, send and return for the effects loop, which can be switched to different uh, input levels. We got uh, the cab break one, two, three settings. So three pre-selected and pre-saved cab rig settings which we're going to get to that's the di out usb-c there is the headphone out which will also uh, you can function as a stereo record out if you wanted that right next to it right here as you can see that is a little a dial for volume there's the xlr out which we're going to use to record the cab rig there's a fan we all need more fans uh 8 ohm 16 ohm two 9 volt outs to, uh, isolated, totaling to a total of 500 milliamps to run your pedals. I love that they did that. It's a tiny little thing that more companies should be doing because that way I can actually have an overdrive on the table and don't need an extra power supply. This is brilliant, switchy thing, and the big plug. This thing, 650 bucks. I'm going to assume, because it comes out two days from now, that this is also 650. And for a 100 watt amp, with a lot of functions and built-in reverb and digital out and all that stuff. Not digital out, I mean, cab rig out simulation. Price-wise, fully okay. Not a problem. It is a model, okay? It's not a tube amp. It is modeling a tube amp. But we're going to find out how good that actually sounds about now. Now, we're going to start with the clean channel, okay? Which is... We're going to go, well, let's go to manual, holding that in, clean. Uh, one thing that I, I mean, I can't say it any other way, massively hate about it is no mute. So when you have to change your guitar, you got to take the master down because there isn't a mute function. Why? On, on this thing, you can engage the tuner by holding these two in, and then you've got the tuner. Where's the, where's the tuner on that one? I don't know. That would be the mute, mute function. It's not there. Oversight. This is the thing. It's like when you have a great product, and there's the tiny things that they're skimping out on or just forgetting. Where's the mute button, people? Because it doesn't have a standby switch like on your amp. So I'm in 20 watt mode. 
And how are you listening to it? You're checking out the Black Star uh, cap from the St. James series. It's a 212. It's super freaking light. And I'm making that very simply, slightly off the middle, with a um, Lewitt MTP 440, mics under 100 bucks. It's a type of SM57, just with a little bit more low end. Uh, very, very simple. And that's what you're hearing. That's the warm mode. Obviously, as you can read, because you're not stupid, this is a heritage or the heritage. Um, what's the motor called? Damn it. Uh, um, it's a heritage thing. And I, I forgot what it's called. Uh, lemon drop something. Really good. Let's see if something, something happens here. Definitely more noticeable in drive, but yeah, the power amp, virtual power amp simulation does something, especially in 606 is way more low end than in the 84 mode. Dark reverb. But again, you can pick more in the app. I like it. Right, reverb mode. Does what it says, uh, dark and bright. And then the channel and bright. Oh, there's a lot of mids all of a sudden being pushed. It's not just brightness. Uh, not subconscious, self-conscious now because I just I just talked to Tim Pierce the other day and Tim Pierce like, I watch your videos and I like your playing. Now, my playing shit because I'm thinking like, Tim Pierce watching this, what the fuck? Ah! Why'd he tell me that? I, I, I was totally okay with my shit playing and now he says, I like it. I can't handle that. <laughs> it I, I i really like it here's the kicker with the di out didn't like it sounded like going directly in a board missing mids thin not making me happy with the cab fuck yeah and that's going to be a m m massive theme in this review with the cab fuck yeah here we go um gain can we do anything there I mean, that's not what it's made for. We're going to go to the crunch. That's what's... Oh, let's, let's go to the clean and boost it. Uh, 
That doesn't do much. It's a volume boost, but really, really no game boost. Ah, no, what? Huh? Okay, something happens there. In in the crunch. So there was, did you, there's no individual volume for each channel, so I'm not quite sure. Should I, should I work with the master? I don't know. I know, that is this. Okay. like that I don't know I like it let's ISF that Yeah, uh, mids disappear a little bit, so wherever you want. It's not day and night. told me I'm playing a modeler, I'd, I'd go like, no, get out of here. It's, it's pretty impressive. I, I, I gotta say, for, you know, it's a digital modeler. It's digital. <laughs> so we can go to Super Crunch. That channel is just fun. This is just 80s rock and roll. It's modded British and fun. Brilliant. <laughs> It, it, it that that really works. We're gonna turn the reverb off. We're gonna to go to overdrive. 
um, which of course isn't overdrive. Yeah, we're going to play with the tubes right there. Thirty fourth. Eighty four. No mute. Not good. Manes Jubel Katsi. a massively good modern metal sound. Of course, we can ISF that. It's fun, it's good, it's massive, and it's way more than this Overdrive, which is a fucking high gain channel. I don't know why they're labeling like that. Um, the crunch is all rock and roll, and the clean can do quite a bit. So this is more than just a black box to do the heavies. Now, at 650, given that it's a 400 watt amp, bedroom level amp, has an effects loop, has a boost, built-in reverb, and uh, three channels that I can kind of save in their settings. So if I like this, I can save this and save the crunch as something else. All the switches, and I even think the uh, knobs get saved. It, of course, has MIDI in, MIDI out. You can, if you wanted to, use a MIDI expression pedal to control any of the parameters on the pedal. All this is good. All this at 650 is valid and zero issues with the sounds, zero issues with the massive power that it has and what you can do with it. Now we're gonna look at more features they put in and we're gonna critique. That's what we're gonna do. Uh, where's, the, where's the mute? So I now connected it with XLR and disconnected the speaker. <laughs> Now we got the clean channel, so I'm going to switch it to speaker one, which is, I think, built in, or maybe the one that I made, I don't know. So here's the clean channel. It sounds like a DI thing. It sounds like I'm going directly into the board. Where's the warmth? Where's the tubiness? It's the, the life is gone. Is it usable? Can, can you record with it? Yes. Would you rather run it through a speaker? Yes. Can you do that at home? No. Um, would you be better off to actually run a DI out and then use some kind of other 
third-party IR loader? Sadly, yes. And um, it doesn't stop there. Let's go here. So here's the thing. Can you hear what's happening? There's a reverb, right? There's an actual reverb. There's a herp. So they have a room simulation, which is, it took me hours to find out what in the world's going on. There's phasing going on and there's a slap back. And why am I not, why is it mushy? Why is it no fun to play? I was fiddling, 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 fiddling with the sound and I wasn't happy. It's because the room simulation is horrible. That's an actual half hall there, just turned down. Now the room when you're doing IRs or the room when you're doing simulation is supposed to give it a tone and not actually be a room. <laughs> And interestingly, I'm going to show you, when you turn it down, it's not gone. That's all woomph and no... Uh. I'm going to switch to the next one here. Sorry, that's just utterly horrible. That's just all low end. I don't know what they're thinking. And then the third one. Can't hear any detail. Where's the guitar sound? Where's what we just heard from the speaker? It's gone. So... Let's look at it. Let's see, throw this away and give me the editor. And here we go. Now it's connected. That's what it looks like. And everything that I actually do on the pedal, you can see, gets reflected in the editor, which is nice. Everything, of course, I do in the editor gets reflected on the pedal. So um, this is all good. kind of completely pointless to do patches because you can't take them with you on the pedal. You can take three. So you can make as many as you want in, in the editor, but you can't actually take them with you. So what's the point? I don't understand. You know, can only have a clean, a crunch, and overdrive saved, and then the manual mode. So the rest is why even have that in there? When I switch here, you can actually see that on top it changes to from manual mode to my patch mode. But the big thing is the cab rig. So here we go. Right now that's a 212. I'm going to switch it to the... Okay, so the first one is a 212. And what I described as that slapback is actually from this room. And you can see it's down quite a bit. So let's see. So we're gonna turn this all the way down. Well, you would think it's gone, right? Well, it isn't because now it's just minus 11 dB. Still there. And I was playing and it just the precision was gone. What you have to do is this. Literally mute it. Now we're talking, now I can actually hear what's going on. Going to be very direct. That's not good. The sound of that room is just horrible. I'm sorry. Medium room, our small room dampened. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you pick. It, there's phasing going on, slapbacky shit going on. Look, I might not know what I'm talking about. Maybe. I mean, I do have every load box and attenuator on the market. Right now, there's an aux. There's a two nodes. There's a sand rock. There's an amp central. There's a Fryette 
power station. In the other studio, I have uh, TAE from um, Boss. I have four Captor X, etc., etc. Maybe I don't know what it's supposed to sound like, but maybe I do know what it's supposed to sound like, and maybe this just doesn't sound right. You decide. So the best thing that I can recommend is turn that shit off. Phasing gone, uh, that slapback is gone, all of a sudden you can play it. Then you can go in here, pick a cap. Okay, let's, let, let's be honest. When I worked with the DI sound, all I was doing is fiddling, fiddling, fiddling with the caps, the mic, the EQ to get something halfway decent. When you're hooking it up to the cap, the Amp 3 from Blackstar rules. When you're trying to record with it, with the built-in cap rig, you're just doubting your own ability to set up a sound. And they're paying me for this video. They know I'm going to say this because I had a two hour meeting with them. And I told them all of this for the, um, for, for the uh, uh, St. James version of the cab rig. This is something they can improve over time. It is not the reason to buy the Amp 3. It isn't. I'm sorry, Blackstar guys, I love you. Ollie, uh, all, the whole team, you got, you're good people but I have to review the product you made and you're buying it despite of it because this is a hindrance in getting a good sound. And I know I'm probably one of the very few people that says that. And no, you're not gonna find out about this in the Sweetwater video because that, you know, it's all positive. I get it. I know that's what the company would probably want me to say. When you're buying that thing, you're buying it despite this because that's not gonna get you anywhere. The sounds you're getting with any cap with this are amazing, really cool. You can't, you can't get them directly. It's not ultra shit, but it's not nowadays what the market wants. Um, load your own IR, no, no, nowhere. You can go DI and then uh, load your own uh, sound in an external IR loader, but that's not, that's not how it should be done. And then we got different mics. It doesn't really matter what mic you pick. It doesn't matter what preset you go to. I'm sorry, Blackstar. Not there. Um, it's 650 bucks. And with that, it's about 100 bucks more than a Captor X. And maybe that is what it's at, where it's at. Maybe they don't have the processing power because they, you know, they, I, I don't know what it is. But Cabrick is not on the level of where other people's cab simulators are. It isn't. So that's not the reason why you buy this. Okay? So, in the software, since you can't really do loads of presets on this thing anyway, and you're going to see it as a three-channel amp anyway, be done with it. Go away. Leslie, throw it away. And give me the amp. Make it bigger. There we go. It's the amp three. 
And if we forget about its shortcoming, which is forget about forget about the cap rig. Just on the cap, this Black Star cap, which is actually not that expensive and super light, with a simple mic, the clean, beautiful, nice variations, decent reverb. We didn't look at the reverb in the. I don't even know how. Wait. Of course, there's you know. Ah, you can do the. You can see it right now. I'm just telling you. There's the reverb time and the tone for both uh, different variations. So not massive stuff that you can do. Of course, it's got MIDI in and through, but see it as a 120 or 1 watt floor amp that has three good channels. Each channel has a good variation, built in reverb, built in boost, and you can kind of save the settings no matter where the knobs are. That, that's about it. But at its price point, that's good. With the dual 9 volt out, you can put pedals in front of it. Killer. It's got an effect loop. Killer. It's got a DI out that do you want to use that live? Well, it depend, depends on what the back line is. If there's no cab at all, sure, use it. Make sure you're programming a cab that's not horrible. If you're not really trusting the 12-year-old setting up a mic on your, on your cab, well, maybe use the DI out. If you want to practice with headphones, sure. If you have a chance to run this on a cab, do it. If you have a chance to run this on a different IR loader box, do it. So given the price point, let's ignore cab rig. It's still highly recommended. It's that simple because damn it on a cab or a different IR loader, uh, the the heavy shit kicks freaking nuts. Put links below and it helps if you use them. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. That is massively important for me personally and my way of how I see myself in the mirror in the morning and also brands that hopefully pay me for the videos. So um, do that. Uh, using my links absolutely supports the channel. Thank you so much. There's also a Patreon. All the links are below. Uh, you can buy silly t-shirts. I don't get money from that, but links below. And um, we'll put animals at the end as always. <laughs>